Hey there, friends. Welcome to day 20 of the 40 day sugar fast. And we've made it halfway. Congratulations. Uh, it should be smooth sailing from here. Uh, with God's help, we should be able to get through this in no time. So, um, 20 days. <laughs> so today the title is the world's goods aren't as good. Um, and the verse she has for us today is first John two fifteen to 17. Don't love the world's ways. Don't love the world's goods. Love of the world squeezes out love of, of for the father. Practically everything that goes on in the world, wanting your own way, wanting everything for yourself, wanting to appear important has nothing to do with the father. It just isolates you from him. The world and all it's wanting, wanting, wanting is on the way, is on the way out. But whoever does what God wants is set for eternity. So if you haven't gathered what this day is about, it's about wanting the world's goods instead of what God has to offer. And she said, are there things? Are the things of the world squeezing out my love for the Father, or is my love for the Father crowding out my love for the world? And um, this was actually a really good topic. Um, and it's something that's always good to be aware of. It's not um, uh, something that, you know, I fear or that I'm trying to hold back or that kind of thing. But um, it's good to be aware of it for sure. So she says, if we spend our energy loving things, we'll come to God spent, flat, broke, and bankrupt. And, you know, I, I thought about that. Like if I'm putting so much passion and love into the things of this world, then, um, I, when I come to Christ, am I fully energized to receive the message and the blessing that he has for me? Or am I just done, done with the day, done with him, done with everything? Am I just spent? Um, so it was a really good perspective using our love for God, um, not things. And then she talks about, we wake up and get out of bed in order to chase down the world's best stuff. But the world will never satisfy us because we weren't made for this world. That is so true. We are made to uh, for God. We were made to praise God, to honor him, to glorify him. We weren't made to glorify ourselves. We weren't made to absorb the things of this world and enjoy them over God. God is our creator, our maker, and we should be putting everything into him instead of the things of this world. The world cannot satisfy us, but it holds us back from the satisfaction of God. And I truly believe that anything, anything, if we put so much into those things, it can hold us back from really, truly having that deep connection and relationship with Christ, um, including, you know, ministries, including um, stuff like the social media videos and and um, things that we want to do for good. If we put more attention, more time into those things and we love those things, you know, how much does God get? Does he get it more than these things? Do we spend time more with God than we do the worldly things? Um, and not all worldly things are bad. She talks about that. Some, some things are good, but do we love them more than God? And if so, we're worshiping the wrong thing, truthfully. She said, God isn't telling us to hate all good things he made in this world. He just doesn't want us to love them more than him, worshiping things such as food, money, clothes, and fame. So I, I truly, truly believe this, and I really love that she brought this up. Because, um, when I was taught, when I was, when I was young, I was taught that, um, you know, I w was to be humble and I truly believe that, that we should be humble. But uh, I was also taught that money was evil, that clothes were like, were, was like, you had to be very, very plain and very, very simple, um, 
you could not enjoy clothing. Um, and I was taught that it was a sin to be um, known, basically. And, um, and it wasn't that uh, it was directly taught this way. Um, I was indirectly like, um, this should be humility and you shouldn't ever, um, allow these things to be enjoyable is, is basically what I took as a teenager. Um, and I, that's part of the reason why I didn't like following Christ then because I couldn't enjoy things at all. And that's not what God's asking us to do. He's asking us not to love them more than him. And that is the key right there. And he knows our hearts. Whether we show other people, um, for instance, if I were to dress in something um, of fashion, it doesn't mean that my heart is all centered on that fashion. So please be careful when you look at other people that you're not judging them at all for their relationship with Christ because that is not your job and it is not my job. And so we need to look at ourselves. We need to analyze our own lives and see where we line up with what we worship and who we worship. Is it God? And is it, if it is, is it more than uh, what we enjoy? Right? So in my opinion now as an adult, I don't see anything wrong with food, money, clothes, and fame. As long as it does not usurp, um, go above our Lord and Savior. So our passion for the gift should never rob our passion for the giver. Right there. Our devotion to this world shouldn't distract us from the only one worthy of our devotion. Absolutely 100% agree with her. Um, it's something I need to have in the front um, as a constant reminder. And uh, yeah, it's really, really good. She says, she goes through some questions. Are you obsessed with being thin, desired, and affirmed? Are you driven by the academic and athletic success of your children, the pride of your life? Do you spend hours on Instagram watching home improvement shows, flipping through magazines, lusting over every kitchen island and every pool look overlooking Napa Valley at sunset? All those things are temporary, but you're living an eternal life now. Um, and she talks about that, um, that we were squeezing out the temporary pleasures of this world so that we might feast on him forever. And I love that picture um, of squeezing the world out by flooding our souls and our life with Christ. So let me read the prayer she has for us today. Dear Lord, I want my heart to be fully devoted to you, not to this world or the things in it. Forgive me. I'm sorry it has taken me so long. Continue to show me how to love you more because you've loved me so faithfully and your love never ends. Speak to me during these next 20 days. Let me hear you and see you and know you as I intentionally pull away from the things of this world and set my gaze upon eternity. In Jesus' unending name, amen. So don't let the things of this world contend with our God. Don't let them take away the time that you have to spend with Christ. I mean, it's good awareness, right? It's good. It's good to know what could potentially be put in our path or the things that we might enjoy that don't center us on Christ. It's good to know how much we truly do spend on it. How much social and how much time do we spend on social media? Um, honestly, I mean, I spend quite a bit on social media because I enjoy looking at arts and crafts stuff or um, cooking stuff. All of those things. I enjoy that a lot. But I can sacrifice that so I can have a closer relationship with Christ. So think on those things. 
Think on what you may need to um, put aside or do less of so that way you can spend more time with Christ. Have a beautiful and blessed day. Welcome to day 20. We are on to day 21. Enjoy.